What is going on guys, it's Code Red here. Welcome back to the Advanced Speed Coding for 1.16 series. This is episode 10, and in today's episode, we're going over reflection. I know a lot of you guys have been wanting this episode for so long, and now we're finally talking about reflection. And this is not just one of your basic, I don't know, action bar or tab reflection videos. I actually went ahead and created code something pretty cool, and I'm gonna show you guys right now. So it's actually a cobblestone generator that auto breaks itself and then it places the cobblestone into the chest for us. This is the plugin that we will be coding this episode and this plugin does use reflection. I can see the animation in the cobblestone right there. That is reflection. We're passing in this anim block animation packet and we're making it go down and then whenever it gets down to zero or whatever, it removes the block and the block is placed in the chest. And I'll show you guys actually how it works. So we hold a chest in our hands, go up to the block, we right click on it, the block gets placed on top of the cobblestone, and then one gets removed from our inventory and it starts the whole event. Now this isn't a perfect plugin. Obviously I coded this probably in, in like 45 minutes, but it is a pretty awesome way to learn reflection. So without further ado, let's get into the code. Now to start off, as you see, I did change my ID color theme back to what I, this is actually what I use when I code personal projects, this is the red theme. But to start off, I coded the project already, um, created it cobblestone, cobble gen chest. This is the main class right here. And I as well as created two other classes. These are empty classes, but these are the classes we're gonna be using in our plugin. So it's only two more classes for this plugin to work. And of course I have the plugin.yml, nothing special in there. Just have an API version of 1.16, but that doesn't really matter. And then the packet sender, like I said, these classes are empty, packet sender. And then I have the chest place, which is a listener class. And I'll go into this more later. But start off, before we get into actual coding, I want you guys to make sure that you have a Java decompiler installed on your Eclipse or on your IntelliJ. If you are using Eclipse, one really easy way to check if it's installed is hover over something like the plugin manager here, or even the Java plugin. Hover over this, click on it, press control, and then click on it again, and it'll open up the class for us. This is the Java plugin class. And as you can see, if you don't have a Java decompiler, this is what it will look like. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick of how to install one. Super simple. Go up to the help, go to Eclipse Marketplace right here. That'll open up something like this. Go into the search bar, search up JAD, and go ahead and install this enhanced class decompiler. Once you install this, you will have to restart Eclipse. But once that is restarted, go up to the window tab right here. Go to premises. And then we're going to locate general. And then we're going to go to editors. File association. Find class without source. And we're going to remove this class file viewer right here. So this one right here, this first one, we're going to remove. And if you installed JAD, you should see this class decompiler viewer right here. So the only thing in your class without view should be this. Once that's done, we go over to, let's make sure we're actually running JAD. So go to the Java, let's open that up. Go to Java, go to decompiler, and then right here, Let's make sure we're running JAD. I know that was a little fast tutorial, but once you apply all of that, and once you reopen the Java plugin class, and there you go. And there's the code for the Java plugin. Like I said, I know that was a really, really, really fast tutorial, um, but I want to get into the code right now. All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and create that packet center class and we're gonna get right into the code here. This is gonna be our main code. It's gonna be where our reflection, all our reflection is. And you don't have to copy any of this stuff in this class right now. I'm just gonna talk about it real quick. So this is what our packet would look like if we weren't using reflection. It has the NMS imports right here at the top. And this import will only work in 1.16 R3. And it won't work in 1.15, 1.14. So the whole point of reflection is to make it so it works in every version and we're gonna have the code in one class. So it's different from abstraction where I actually, I actually have a video on, on abstraction. You go ahead and check that out in the description below where we have multiple classes 
for multiple versions of NMS. Instead of that, we can all put all that code in one class and it'll work. So like I said, this is the packet. If you go ahead and press control on your keyboard and click on it, it'll open up our packet code. Go ahead and keep this open. We're gonna use this later on, as well as go to the block position right here, control, click on it. And we're gonna keep this open because this is pretty important. Now the whole point of this class right here, it's turn what we have in here into reflection. And real quick, we'll talk about the block playout animation. It takes in three parameters here. The first parameter will be an entity ID. This is so we're able to see multiple animations at once. So we have this animation and that animation going on at the same time. If you pass in two different numbers there, we get to see them at both. The next one will be the block position. This is pretty self-explanatory. You're just passing in the block of where the animation is going to be, the X, the Y, and the Z. And the last one will be the status. And this is just a zero through nine number basis of just seeing what kind of and emissions displaying. Now this is right here, just displaying six through zero, I'm pretty sure. And good note, I'm gonna go back, uh, I'm gonna talk more about it later on, but if you put in a 10, that just means no animation. And then finally, this is gonna send our packet to the player. And moving on, we're gonna create two different things in here. And this is how it's all gonna work. We're gonna have a constructor that has a type of question mark because we don't know what kind of constructor it is. So we're gonna create our class constructor first. So we're gonna go into our classes here and we're gonna find that constructor and we're gonna to have to create this constructor through reflection. Once we create that constructor, we can go ahead, where am I? We'll go ahead and uh, create that object from that constructor, which is just a new instance of the constructor. I'm just letting you guys know this right now so you don't get confused later on. What we're gonna do is create a constructor for both these classes up here and then we're gonna create an object for both these classes up here. All right, go ahead and remove this, and let's get started. The first thing, however, what we're gonna need is get that NMS class. So go ahead and create a private class, question mark, we'll call it get NMS class, and you're gonna have a parameter of a string class name. It's gonna be a try and catch. We're gonna try and catch a class not found exception. Now let's make sure we do e.printStackTrace at the end of this. Now actually I went over this before in my abstraction video and to get, so the whole point of this right here is getting our NMS class. So we're passing in a name. So we're passing in the block position name right here. Let's go ahead and comment this real quick. So say we're passing in the name of block position right here. What we're trying to do is trying to get these numbers that are right before it. We don't know the numbers because it can be working in any version of Spigot. We just want to get those numbers. So we're going to say is class dot for name. Oh, whoa, whoops. Dot for name. And the name here is going to be net dot Minecraft dot server dot plus. So right here, we're building this. So we built this so far. Now we got to find those numbers. So plus, I'm gonna move down a line and I'm gonna say bucket dot get server dot get class dot get package dot get name and finally dot split. And we're splitting two backward slashes and a dot and then go outside of that and let's make an array index of three. And then we're saying plus dot plus class name. And just like that, we went ahead and we created our import. So like I said, we pass in block position, block positions right there. And we just go ahead and created this entire import. Lastly, just put return null. So if this is not found, if we put in the wrong name or something, let's just return null. Next up, let's create our, this is our main method right here. But this is gonna be uh, private object, our build packet method. Now this method, I made it I made it separately because this is different every single time depending on what kind of packet you have. This is where reflection kind of gets annoying. You have to do a lot of research into NMS and try to figure out what your packet needs. But our packet needs a location and an int that I'm gonna call status. This algorithm is surrounded by try and catch. 
uh, but I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna go ahead and have Eclipse make it for me. But like I showed you earlier, we're gonna create a constructor question mark, and this is gonna be our block constructor, our block position constructor. So that equal to get NMS class. Like I said, this is our block position. Now this is case sensitive, so make sure you have everything exactly how the class name is. And we're saying get constructor. All right, go ahead and import constructor and that's gonna be the reflect. So all the imports here are gonna be reflect. Make sure you have it all correct. So what is our constructor for block position? Like I said, keep that class open. We will be visiting a few times. It has many different constructors. As you can see, there's all, they all have parameters and let's pick the easiest one. And the easiest one is gonna be this one right here, the int. So let's go ahead and create this. It has three different ints passed in. So what we need inside our get constructor is int.class, int.class, int.class. And that will create our constructor, our block position constructor. Once we have that constructor, we need that object. And this is gonna be our block position. So this is actually gonna be our actual class. It's gonna be able to do everything that's in here. So that equal to block constructor. God. Oh, new instance. And then when we're creating a new instance, what we're saying here, we're just passing in the actual position. So this is the actual position of our block animation. So block dot get. I'm so sorry if I'm doing a lot of type errors. This is not the keyboard I type on when I actual code. This is just my recording keyboard, if y'all didn't know. And yeah, it's hard to get used to. But like I said, this is our actual position of our animation. So when we're creating this new instance, we're passing in the block that we did here, the X, the Y, and the Z. I can't, I know you can't see the Z, but it says block to get Z. And we're gonna get a few red underlines here. Go ahead and copy all the current code that we have. Copy this because we're gonna have to go ahead, hover over and surround it with a multiple, a try multi catch. Go ahead, delete all the code, but the try and catch. And then inside the try and catch, paste your copy code that you did earlier. And you're gonna get another red underline. That's because we need to add exceptions to the existing catch clause. We're gonna have a lot of different exceptions here. And it's actually better to have these exceptions named out like this than it is just to type exception E. All right, I'm gonna move that try and catch down so we see it a little better. So now we have our block position. The next thing that we need is our actual packet. So we're to say constructor question mark. And this is our packet constructor. Set that equal to get NMS class. And our packet is called packet play out block break animation. And we're to say dot get constructor. And inside here, just like I said before, we need to pass in everything that a constructor has. And that constructor, if you see, they do have a default one, but that doesn't do anything for us because then we're not really, we don't really know what these do. So we don't want to deal with this. We want to do this one right here. So we want to make sure our constructor has an int, a block position, and an int var2, whatever. Uh, that's why we went ahead and created block position first because this one requires our block position. So in our constructor, the first one was our int.class. The next one will be our block position. And the third one will be another int. Oh, my bad. Actually, this is not where we're putting that yet. We're actually going to say get NMS class block position. So our three parameters here is an int, get NMS block position, and then our, another int, and then in our object, that's where we'll use this other object. So this is gonna be our actual packet. The whole point of this method is to build this packet right here, and we're finally doing it. Packet constructor dot new instance, the same as before. And now we're passing in our actual values. So this is just default of our constructor. Now we're passing our actual values 
And I'm gonna skip this first one. I'm gonna put I there for a second and skip it. We'll come back to it. The next one will be our block position. And the last one will be our status that's passed in through our method at the top. So our block position already has our where our animation is gonna be. And the status is just what kind of animation is displaying. Now, why did I skip this? And I kind of did this lazily. I, I did this really lazy. Um, this number here should be unique. You guys should not have two animations that display the same ID because then they won't show at the same time. So this number has to be unique. It doesn't matter if any numbers are the same to like an entity or something like that. These just has to be different from other block break animations. So what I did a very lazy way of doing it is I said block dot get block X. Now, this is not the best way of doing it. This does get you a number. It does give you, give you a int number. However, you cannot have two cobblestone generation, cobblestone generators that are on the same X block. I just did this for the tutorial stake. You guys should actually go ahead and make like a random number or something like that, or keep track of the actual numbers in the file system or a hash map, something like that. All right. But for tutorial sake, you can go ahead and use this if you like. Once we have our packet created, we can finally say return packet. Go ahead and remove all that white space. And at the end, just like before, I'm gonna say return null. And there we go, we built our packet finally. This is our packet playout block break animation. And last but not least, we just need one more method. I know we're almost there guys, and this is the send packet. And we're passing in a location block and in status to this one too. And then for this one, we're going to say object, oops, object packet equals our build packet block and status. And uh, typically I probably would put this in the same method, but uh, just so you guys know, whatever we put in this method here, you guys can use in any reflection code. Same with this one. This will work in any time you use reflection. However, this code will only work for the block break animation packet. All right. We will need to make a for loop here. Let's say for loop player player bucket dot get online players. Because when you're dealing with packets, you're setting it to a player, not to every player. So we need to go and loop through every single player that's online. This is another thing that I will change later on. However, for the tutorial's sake, we're gonna loop through every single player that's online and send that packet to them. Now, if I was actually creating this plugin for real, I would probably just get all the players that are near the cobblestone generator and send them that packet when they're close to it. However, that is a lot more code and the video is already long enough. What we're gonna say here is object to handle player dot get class dot get method. And we're not, we don't need another. We're gonna say get handle dot invoke uh, player. This right here is gonna build our craft player for us. And just as before, make sure you copy all the code here and then surround it with try and catch. Delete all the old code and we place it in here. There we go. Okay. So this object, like I said, is gonna be our craft player for us. After we get our craft player, we need our player connection. So object player connection equal handle dot get class dot get field player connection. If you have dealed with packets before, this all should look familiar to you. When you're dealing with packets and you don't want to use reflection, you just got to get a player and you got to create a craft player. So you turn that player into a craft player, which is the NMS player. And then you get that player connection through the craft player methods. And then you get, and then you just send the packet to them. It's that simple. And we're doing the same stuff as before. Whenever you get the red underline, make sure you hover over it and then add an exception to the existing clause right here. And then finally, once we have that player connection, all we have to say is player 
connection dot get class dot get method. And this is the send packet method. And then our second parameter would be get NMS class. And this is our class called packet. And I'm gonna go out both times here. And I'm actually gonna move down the line. So easier to see, I'll say dot invoke. And I'm invoking the player connection and the packet. And boom, our reflection is all done. Once you have this class complete, you should notice at the top, we have no NMS imports, just the ones I commented out here. So this should work in 1.16, 1.15, 1.14. I'm not too sure how old this packet is. So you guys will have to go ahead and check it out and see if it works in other versions. Um, the constructor could have changed. So that's why we go ahead and check and make sure you're putting the right values in there. But finally, our reflection code is done. Now, moving on, go into our chest plays class, go ahead, make it sure it implements a listener and create that public void on place player interact event event. So whenever they place a chest, it just goes into the player interact event. We are almost there. It's a little bit more code to go. Probably take about eight minutes. So first up, if the event that has item. So if they don't have an item, which return, that means if they don't have an item in their hand, let's just get out of it. And we also need to do has block. Actually, we, uh, yeah, let's do this one. So if we're not clicking a block, let's do that. And we'll say if event dot get item. So the item in their hand, get the type. If it does not equal material dot chest, so if it doesn't equal material chest, let's just return. Go ahead and import material. And as well as I'm gonna copy this one, change the get item to get, get clicked block. So if the, the block they're clicking on does not equal cobblestone, then let's return. So now we know that they're holding a chest. We know that they're clicking on cobblestone. The next thing I want to check is block.chest block. And this is where we're going to spawn our chest. So whenever the player, oh my God, it's a lot of cobblestone. Whenever the player clicks on the cobblestone, we want that chest to spawn up here. So that location right here will be our chest block. We'll set that equal to event.getClickedBlock.getLocation.add. And we're adding 0, 1, 0. I just add one to the Y and we're saying dot get block. Next up is this little check right here. So if dot chest dot, if, uh, if just block dot get type does not equal material dot air, then what's return. So if there is something above this cobblestone, let's just not do anything, which is return and get out of there. Um, obviously this is probably not the best check to do. If you were to create this a real plugin, I would create a custom chest. So whenever you're placing that custom chest, we go ahead and do all this a little better check than just checking if it's not air. But once you have that check, we'll just go ahead and do what we have to do. So that is our event dot set canceled. We don't want to place that chest down there. However, we do want to remove that chest from the guy's inventory. So make a fee. Set equal to a new item stack material chest. I have to do it like this. Sorry, my eclipse is broken right now. And so value of one there. So whenever they are clicking it, we do want to remove the chest from them. So let's go ahead and create an item stack of that chest. So you get player dot get inventory dot remove. Now the dot remove here doesn't work. You have to use dot remove item. So make sure you're saying dot remove item and we're moving the fee from the inventory. And then last but not least, chest block dot set type to material dot chest. So that will cancel our chest, our place event. 
go ahead and remove the chest from the inventory and then it'll place the chest above the cobblestone right here. I went ahead and I made another method for this. I probably would make another class if I was code and plugin for real, but let's create a private void execute auto breaker. I must pass in a block of our cobblestone. This is going to need an instance of our packet sender called sender, or we call it, we'll call it packet equal a new packet sender. So we're creating the instance of that class we just created. And the next up, we're going to say new bucket runnable. Cause this does run every 10 ticks int status. Now this is the number that I said is our animation. You can do zero through nine. There's nine different animations and number 10 will reset it. So if you put 10 there, that just means there'll show no animation at all. So I'm gonna do six for the animation. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing as before with this chest block here. Copy this code, paste it in here, change the event that I clicked to cobble. Cause I wanna get that chest block as well. And let's go ahead and create a chest. If you have never created a chest before, this is how you do it. You gotta get the block where the chest is and we know it's a chest, so we don't have to really check if it is yet. But once we get that block, we say get state and there we go. So that created our chest for us. Let's go ahead and finish making the runnable so we don't get this error anymore. So I'm gonna say dot run task and I'm gonna say, hmm. I'll do this one for the plugin. I'm going to say the main class, which is cobble gen chest dot get plugin cobble gen chest dot class the delay. I'm going to start at one tick and then I'm going to make it run every 10 ticks. And there we go. Once we have the status, once we have the chest block in the chest, all we really have to do is run what we need to run. So if the cobble that get type equals material air, that means that the block is broken. So whatever the, this material in the cobblestone is air, that just means the block got broke. And we just want to say return here. We don't want to show any animation on air. So we just want to say return. So when the block is broken, we don't have to worry about this runnable. Next up is our cancel check. So if the chest block that get type does not equal material dot chest. Now I added this little check in here. So if for some whatever reason, the player breaks the chest, it stops the animation from happening. So if the block above the cobblestone is not a chest, Let's go ahead and set cobble dot set type to material cobblestone. Now I'm setting the cobblestone just in case if it's air, I'm setting it to cobblestone again so we don't get any little error. It is a generator, so it doesn't really matter. And then we're setting the packet sender or the packet dot send packet at location, the cobblestone location. And then I'm not passing in status here. I'm actually going to pass in 10. That's going to remove any animation. So if there is an animation while you're breaking that chest, it's going to remove it and set to no animation. And then last up, we're going to say cancel. And then we're going to say return here. All right, one more check. And that's if the status equals zero. That just means that the animation went all the way through. And let's go ahead and break that block. And I'm just going to say, cobble.set type to material dot air. And then we need to get that chest that we have above, get the inventory for it, dot add item, a new item stack, material dot cobblestone. And then we set our status back to what it was before. We set it to six. And let's say return. And then finally, after all three of those ifs, you can say packet dot send packet 
cobble.get location status and then make sure you have status minus minus. Oof, okay, I know that video did run a little long. Um, there's one more thing to do. After we set the type up here in our event, let's make sure we're actually running this method and just pass in the event.getClicked block. Like I said, I know that video, this video did run a little long. It is a lot of stuff to go over and I wanna make sure you guys understand what you're doing in reflection. I don't just wanna code it and be like, yeah, this does that, blah, blah, blah. I wanna make sure you guys understand how this works so that you're able to go into any packet and create your own constructor, your own object of it. You will get errors in the console. However, you just gotta keep trying, do some trial and error until you finally get it. And this did take me a little bit to get this whole packet center, everything to work. But in the end, I coded this in probably 45 minutes, so it wasn't too bad. And then uh, one more thing before I go ahead and run this on the server. Once you add the item to inventory, you will see this one method called chest.update, and this actually removes everything in the chest. So I will not have that in there. Just make sure you have add item. And I'm going to run this on the server and see how it works. All right, before I run this on the server, I did mess up here. This actually says supposed to be player connection. Please, that's very, very important. Player connection. Uh, I think I auto-completed and just did player instead of player connection. But this is player connection. And uh, I know if it says before, but this right here will always work and no matter what packet you're doing, as well as this will work. This is the only one that you really have to customize depending on what packet you're coding. All right, so now let's run on the server. All right, now on the server, when I have a chest in my hand and I click on this right here, to give that little animation and when the animation is done, the block breaks and we look in the chest and we get our cobblestone. So we actually see a, it's in real time. So whenever the chest block breaks, we get three. And we can go ahead and do it over here as well. Now, obviously this is not a perfect plugin. Like I said before, there's quite a few things that I would change and do if you want to make this a real plugin. And there should be a little list on the screen now of things that I would change and do differently. However, I do hope you guys did enjoy this episode and learned something new. I know this is a longer episode, but I wanted to go over how packets really work. So you guys are able to take the skill and, you know, create it for multiple things. This is just one of the hundreds of packets that you can actually do. And soon I will go over my packet reader again. So we're able to see other packets that we can go ahead and handle. Please like subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next episode.